Good morning. All right, we are in uh, Psalm 13 today. It will probably be the last psalm we'll do for a while. We'll start a new book on Monday. Um, psalm 13, though, is a great psalm. Let's go ahead and pray, and then we will read it. Heavenly Father, thank you for your steadfast love. Thank you for your mercy that you show us every day. Thank you that we can trust you because we know who you are. God, please, this morning as we read your word, teach us more about who you are so that we can grow in that trust of you and your graciousness and your mercy. God, please uh, be with us and give us wisdom. Light up our eyes as we read your word. In Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, let's go ahead and read Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. All right, that is God's word to us today in the book of Psalms. All right, let's, uh, let's observe. <clears throat> and again, if you're new to these uh, devotionals, the observation is to focus us on what the Bible is actually saying. It very often is summarizing or paraphrasing. Um, it seems obvious, but it is necessary so that we can ensure that we are actually seeing God's word as it is and not as we expect it or want it to be. So um, we see that David asks one main question, how long, accompanied by a uh, modifier uh, will you will you forget me forever? Right, so that's kind of his opening question. And then there are specific modifiers that come after this. Uh, will you hide your face from me? Right, so how long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul? How long um, will I have sorrow in my heart all the day? Um, how long shall my enemy be exalted over me? So these are things that are um, expanding on his initial question. They're all how long questions. And then we see that David requests an answer and expresses his fears, um, the fears that he, he thinks will come about if he's not answered, uh, this, that he will sleep the sleep of death. This is a fear. Uh, that his enemies will say they have prevailed over him that his foes will rejoice because he is shaken. Uh, and in the midst of these, right at the beginning of him expressing these fears, he requests that God light up his eyes. Then David says that he has trusted and shall rejoice. He says he will sing for what God has done. And specifically because God has dealt bountifully with him. So, as we move into further application and interpretation, um, we see that this psalm is David. And we know, of course, it's a psalm of David because um, it says at the beginning, to the choir master, a psalm of David. And it, it's titled, How Long, O Lord? Most likely because of all the questions about how long. <laughs> it makes sense. It's an easy way to title and remember the psalm. <clears throat> but in this psalm, David is dealing with doubt and questions and with fears. And they're things that um, we can relate to. The doubt and questions, for instance. Um, will I ever feel joy again? Right? This sadness that I feel. Um, I'm sad all day. Am I always going to feel this way? Will I see justice, right? Um, this question of 
how long shall my enemy be exalted over me is a question of justice. This person has wronged me and they're getting away with it, God. They're winning. Will I see justice? This is a doubt. It's a question for God. And David is dealing with fear. The fear is, I'm afraid I'm going to die. Right? So sleep the sleep of death. <laughs> That's a poetic way of saying I'm afraid that I'm going to die. Uh, um, the fear that those who hate him are going to win. They're going to get away with it. The fear that he's going to look foolish. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. And these fears are rooted in his fear that he's not going to be answered. Or this, maybe it's not a fear that he's not going to be answered, but he's saying, if you don't answer me, God, without your response, without your consideration and answer, these things will happen to me. So, on some level, it is a fear. It may not be something he thinks likely to happen, but it is him expressing his fear. And the wonderful thing about this psalm is he's bringing these things right to God and laying them at God's feet. Here are my questions, God. Here are my fears. You know my heart already, but I want to express to you what I'm dealing with here. I'm afraid, I'm questioning, and I want you, God, to answer me. And how wonderful is this that, that he has questions for God and he's giving God the opportunity to answer those questions. He's submitting to God's answers for those questions. How often do people question God, but they don't go to God for the answer? They go to their own hearts for the answer, or they go to some other supposed expert for an answer, but they refuse to submit to God's answer and how he has already answered. And that is, I think, the central, um, well, it's the turning point for David here. He expresses his fears in... Um, in this request that God light up his eyes. What does it mean? Because this is really um, the only specific request he makes here. Consider and answer me. This is a general request. I mean, and, and it's maybe uh, specific in that he has asked some specific questions. But this request to light up his eyes is... A unique request. It's something that you wouldn't ask of anyone. You might ask anyone to consider an answer, but this request to light up my eyes is unique. So what would David mean by this? We, we know kind of what it means to consider and to answer, but what does David mean when he says light up my eyes? Light up my eyes. Well, so if we think about eyes, I mean, first of all, we can, we can just try to... Um, Actually, you know what? First, let's see what David has to say. So, so this is interesting. Um, <clears throat> something we very often do is we go to what we think it might mean. First, let's see what David, how David uses um, this verbiage, if he uses it elsewhere. And he does actually use it somewhere else. Um, Psalm 19.8. He says, The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure enlightening the eyes, enlightening the eyes. <clears throat> this same um, verbiage, light up my eyes. So what, what lights up the eyes? The commandment of the Lord. So it, I think perhaps what David is learning here uh, and the way that God answers him is he says, um, and, and we see later in the psalm that, that David has learned this, you ask me to light up your eyes. I will do that with my word. My commandment enlightens your eyes is God's answer to this. 
So this question, this request that David makes in Psalm 13, um, we see that he received his answer, and he talks about it in Psalm 19. And it's the precepts of the Lord which rejoice the heart. So the way he finds his, his, finds his way out of this despair and the way his eyes are light, enlightened is through the precepts of the Lord, the commandments of the Lord. God's character, who he is. God's revelation to us. So even David, I mean, he's, he's, he receives direct revelation from God, but even he is told to depend on God's word as it has been given him and God's character as it has been shown to him through um, the law, through God's commandments and precepts. They're beautiful and they give life. They um, rejoice the heart and they enlighten the eye. Now, when we think about enlightening the eye, it would be, you know, maybe giving insight, giving wisdom, giving vision. These are all things that the law, that God's commandments would do as well. And this is possibly how, how, um, how the law is enlightening David's eye. It's by giving him vision of who God is. He doesn't have to guess at God, God's character and his intentions. He can look at God's law, his precept, and how he has acted in the past and know with certainty who God is and what might be expected from God. And we see as we move into verse 5 and 6 that um, David realizes and, and he he states that I, I have trusted your steadfast love. So this doubt that I have, this is actually contrary to, to what I know about you and what the way I've behaved um, in that knowledge of you in the past. So maybe I'm the one in the wrong here. I've, I have trusted in your steadfast love, God. So my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I have my answer already. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. And then, so this, this realization that, <clears throat> you know, I, I have trusted you because I know who you are. I can still trust you. And I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. I have seen the way God has dealt with me in the past. I know he's good. And he's better to me than I deserve. So I'm going to sing to him. Because even if I do die, even if I don't, understand this situation um, <clears throat> and somehow God does allow these enemies to prevail for a time. I know that God has already dealt bountifully with me. He's given me much more than I deserve. So I will sing to the Lord. And this is what God's word does for us. So God himself was gracious in turning David's attention back to his word, to God's word. And when he turned his eyes back on God's word, he began to see God's character and see that God has already provided an answer. This is who I am. Right? So this is who God is, according to his word, according to how he has acted in the past. And we can know that and we can trust that, just as David did. We don't need special signs. Oh God, you know, if, if you love me, um, let the sunrise be a certain color today or let a butterfly fly across my path or, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it, any number of ways that we test God and, and, and question him. It's okay to question. It, it, our hearts do that. But God will turn us back again and again to his word. Why would he give, give you some sign when he's already given you all of this? That's enough of a sign, I think. It should be. And that's what David is realizing here. He's realizing, I've asked all these questions, and God has heard me. And I've asked him for an answer. And that he would light up my eyes and give me vision and wisdom. And the way God answers David, David. He answers David is 
You know me. You have my precepts. You have my commandments. And through these, I will give you vision and wisdom of who I am and that you can trust me. Praise God. His scripture is more than we deserve and it is enough for everything we face. It is sufficient to deal with all that we come across in our lives. So even in the midst of fear and doubt, we can trust the Lord. We can trust him because we know who he is and what he has done. We know these things by studying his word, which he has graciously given to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you showed us, you have shown us such mercy, um, such provision by granting us your word, your holy word, and also by granting us the word in flesh, who is Jesus Christ. You provided for us so much more richly than we deserve. Help us to trust your provision and not seek for, uh, not ask for more than you have already given because what you have given is enough. Of course, Lord, we do hunger for a more complete knowledge of you, for a better understanding of who you are, but we know that everything we need <clears throat> for knowledge of you, for life here on earth, is in your word. So help us to understand what to ask for. Help that to be um, a request for understanding as we read your scripture, for um, enlightenment as we encounter your word, and, and God, the will to submit to you, the wisdom to accept what you say and apply it to our lives. God, we pray for all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ your word given to us. Amen. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I will see you again.